Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Mocking with Wiremark.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about how we can run Wiremark as a .NET tool. So all these days, we have been running Wiremark using this particular C Sharp .NET console application, something like this. So we set up all these Wiremark server code in a variable, something like that. And then we also set all the mappings and things of that nature. So what if I really don't want to go with this approach, rather I just want to run the Wiremark server in the console application as a .NET tool, like a command line, and then I can just refer back the Wiremark mapping file that I have already created in our earlier lectures of this course. So if we go to our application over here into the directory, you know that we already have got this mappings file we're just going to have all the different mappings that we can use within the wiremark.net. But I don't really need to use the same application every single time, right? I need to just point that mapping file and then use that mapping file from within our .NET tool. So the way you can do it is you can use this wiremark as a .NET tool option to do the operation. So how you can do it is you can just use this .NET tool install hyphen hyphen global .NET hyphen wiremark command to do that for you. So if you just go to the command line over here, so I can just stop our existing execution and then just go to the command line and just search for .NET and then tool and install a global of the wiremark uh, or .NET wiremark. And if you hit enter, this is going to install the .NET wiremark for you. I have already installed this tool, so it is just going to be reinstalling the same thing for me. But then you can just run this .NET wiremark, something like this, and this is going to start the wiremark server for you running in the port number 9091, which is great, right? You don't have to do anything and automatically everything is going to spawn up for you. And note that this time the wiremark server also has got some server settings automatically being set. It sets the URL to port number 9091 and it also sets a start timeout of 10,000 and also sets some other settings as false and also I set some use regex extended as true for me. So now if I just go back to my postman and if I just go to colon 9091 and if I just hit slash and hyphen hyphen underscore underscore admin underscore slash uh, mappings and if I hit enter you'll notice that there are going to be no mappings because it doesn't really exist but if I just go and see all the settings that I have got it is going to show me all the different settings that the wiremark.net command line interface has got for me so this is cool I can actually see all these things over here now, I'm actually going to go to our Wiremark server. I'm going to stop this entire thing. See that every time when I try to do something in the Postman, it is just going to show me in the console log over here. So I'm just going to stop everything. And I'm going to say uh, the .NET Wiremark. And I can read a static mapping as true. And I can also read from a specific location of that particular file. So what does that really mean is that, so if you just do an LS this time, you can see that I don't really have any underscore underscore uh, admin folder in here. So let's say if I just gonna go to this location, which I have got the mappings that I have got over here. So I'm gonna copy this whole path and I'm gonna go to this location and I'm gonna say CD of this particular path. So now if I just do an LS, you see that I have got this whole mapping. I'm gonna come out of a, this a bit. And now you see that we have this underscore underscore admin folder in this particular directory. So if I just do a PWD, there's nothing but this particular directory has got the underscore underscore admin folder for me. And now what I can do it is I can just do a .NET wiremark of read static mappings as true. So if I set that, see what happens is it automatically reads from the underscore underscore admin slash mappings folder. Remember this is the exact same behavior happened while we tried doing the read static mapping as true over here like this. 
and then we also know that every time while you do a watt static mapping the default location is going to be the folder location of that particular path so if i just do a control space see that it is going to be always underscore underscore admin slash mappings folder so that is what is really happening behind the scene for us guys that's that's awesome so now that it reads from this particular location if i go to the postman now i can do the exact same thing what i really mean is that i can just say get address slash one it should give me the address for the one as karthik and similarly if i say get our address as object slash one then it should give me what i'm looking for maybe i'm not correct so is it as object oh sorry from object so if i say from object then I should give, get Prashant Chennai and India. So now it is reading from the static mapping for me this time. See that? It's all just been served based on the path that I'm trying to give and everything is coming up for me automatically. So if I just put things uh, side by side, uh, which is gonna be this location, and the postman over here. So if I try to do a send, you see that the dot and command line is basically working for me behind the scenes. So it's just serving from that particular static mapping. So this is how we can use the wiremock.net from the command line interface as a .NET tool instead of how you can just run it from the code, something like this. This is quite interesting and you can use the exact same thing with a CI CD operation where you can just map the mapping file to that location and you can use it within your testing as if like this is an application which is going to act for you while you don't really have to deploy the entire api in the ci cd pipeline because now your wire mock server is going to act as an application for you to serve all the requests that you have already written in your mapping file hope you have got the idea catch you in the next one where we are going to talk about proxying